Hello and welcome to this new textile podcast episode. This is Nani, I'm Clara, and we're going to talk about medieval garments now in this episode. We were planning originally to go to a Christmas market in the beginning of December, which didn't turn out that fine. Because <laughs> I got sick and yes. didn't go. <laughs> but yeah, this episode is going to be about our outfits. We're going to talk about that, how we made them, what patterns we used. Uh, so yeah. First of all, I want to say that we did that just for fun. So I know there are a lot of reenactment, medieval reenactment people out there who know a lot about uh, medieval reenactment and costuming. And we are not very skilled in that. We did it just for fun and to have, yeah, to have fun wearing these costumes and yeah. Doing our best with the knowledge we have. Right now, actually, yes. right now. So yeah, should we start? With the undergarments? Yeah, you can start if you want to. Okay. Um, this is my undergarment. It's a bra dress. Actually, it's a reconstruction of the Langberg bra. It's an um, archaeological find of actually multiple um, historical undergarments in a castle at Langberg, so it's Where is Austria. That? Okay. And um, they found three or four of um, upper bodice or upper garments like this with um, yeah, basically cups inserted mm. here which look somewhat like a bra, still a little bit different, mm. but um, it's really comfy. When mm. I wore it yeah, only one day till now, but I really like wearing it and yeah so it's the bodice and a, a long skirt, skirt basically attached to it yeah. yeah and what can I tell about it it's linen so that's it extra comfy <laughs> extra comfy and also I did every seam allowance to the outside because it's an undergarment you won't see it and so the seam allowances are not directly to the skin mm. so it's, it's even softer then even yeah. softer yeah and yeah how did you get the pattern did you drape it on yourself or how did you uh no i got this, this project pattern from um her blog name is Cutterfog. Mm -hmm. she makes a lot of reenactment and she provided a pattern for free which i used and then adapted to my body mm -hmm. because the cups had to be a different mm. shape for me yeah. and that's almost all I changed and then I of course added the skirt that was this wasn't uh, provided in the pattern but it's just a rectangle which is gathered mm. at the waistline it's and... interesting that these cup shapes are there are dimes in the middle mm. with modern bras you would um, have a seam right there to provide this volume that you create, this yeah. 3D shape. But there you have like a lot of fabric through the start. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's also maybe because um, it's not planned for this start. Ah, you did that? I did it later because oh, for okay. me it didn't work. It looked okay. really bad. And then I saw Very pointy, that... Yeah, so, yeah. And not pointy, but wrinkly actually. Uh, yeah. The seam here in the front, this one uh, mm. running from the top to the bottom, um started wrinkling mm. and i saw at Cutterfox blog also uh, too that uh, she did the same thing ah, okay. so mm -hmm. i thought okay she might have mm. more experience and if she does it i can too yeah <laughs> and okay. i don't have to cut into the fabric and don't know if it works or mm. not and it really was a thing in the mock-up which was of cotton it worked the cotton was a little bit mm. stiffer, so these wrinkles didn't appear. And here with the linen, which mm. is softer, I had those wrinkles. So sometimes even with a mock-up in another yeah. fabric, it doesn't work out. I have experienced this quite a lot with a lot of yeah, blouse patterns, Edwardian blouse patterns that I used, that the mock-up looked almost perfect. And then I cut out the main fabric, which was the same material, so cotton, but 
maybe a little thinner and then it looked completely different. Yeah. And even the elasticity of the fabric didn't, wasn't the same. So it's good to use very similar fabrics. Yeah, absolutely. Or even the main fabric if you have enough, if you get to buy enough. Yeah. yeah. And it's not too um, expensive. Yeah, yeah. That's almost always the case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I still think it was a good idea to make the mock-up because the first draft wouldn't have fitted at all. Yeah. One thing I don't like about this dress is that I have a little bit too much material here in front. So when I wear it, it uh, starts mm. bulking up. And I thought about, because the original had an um, uh, insertion of um, needle lace in the front, and if I would add this, I could take away this material that is too mm. much and just insert the lace here. Mm. But I... Or even just add a seam right here. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That would also be a possibility. Mm. So, yeah, it could be a little better. But for um, the first mm. garment of this type, I think it was yeah. a really good one. Would you wear this as a modern dress? under like a summer dress yeah i think so um i would choose a garment that is really um not see-through over mm. it because i'm feeling a little bit naked just wearing this to be honest yeah. <laughs> because really i don't wear sense. a bra underneath that because yeah. that wouldn't uh, Fit. match yeah and therefore just because I'm not used to it, I feel a little bit naked, what is completely irrational. Yeah, I mean, it's a different kind of undergarment. Yeah. When you're not used to wearing this, then it's completely normal, I think. Yeah. I would too, I assume. But yeah, I would wear it in a modern setting um, if the garment over it um, fits mm. the style. Mm. Also, these um, seams are quite thick yeah. due to... I don't know what are these seams called? Felt. I mean, these are quite thick, so you have maybe some bulk at certain areas. Yeah. If the dress you're wearing over it is thin, more... it would be yeah. visible. Mm -hmm. With the wool, the garment I wear over this is with wool and you don't see it, but yeah. I think this area, especially where the um, gathering is, that mm -hmm. you would see it with a yeah. thin overgarment. But for the rest, it's really mm -hmm. comfy, it's really lightweight, and I could imagine wearing it in the summer or even in the winter with something heavy over it yeah. or warm. The most important thing is warmth, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was my first layer for the whole outfit. What's okay. your first layer? So my undergarment is a bit simpler. It's this which you would call a shift, which was an undergarment uh, worn up to the 18th century. It's very simple because it's just two panels of fabric for the front and the back. You wouldn't even need this uh, center seam, theoretically. And you have uh, straight sleeves and one gusset in the other arm. And this is basically how you have enough um, room under the, your arms for movement. I wanted to use a white fabric originally, but I had this uh, like darker linen fabric in my stash, which we bought at a fabric market a few years ago. Few years, years ago? No, 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 I think it was last. No, I was. I think it was two years ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I wanted to use it for a summer dress, but I mean, I just, it's better to just use what you have instead of buying new fabric. Yeah. Um, what I did, which, which is different to my 18th century shift, is that it's becoming wider so I added gussets in the sides as well to have a bit more freedom of movement when walking yeah so um, I was thinking a bit more on the practical side for this uh, Christmas market event that we were going through because um, what I did for when I went to the market is to wear modern undergarments under it so I did all my fitting with my modern undergarments and then I wore this over it because I, I knew that I would feel a bit uncomfortable if I wouldn't be doing that. And which, this is why I decided to yeah do all my fittings with my bra, my modern bra. Yeah. Yeah. I also wore, um, which we haven't talked about, which is under undergarments, like the stockings. Stockings. Yeah. I wore uh, modern leotards. Uh, so yeah, 
I would have to, but yeah. because we knew it mm. would be cold. And it was really cold and really, really wet. Oh. Yeah. So it was raining all evening and I was just, when we went back to the car, uh, yeah. You were really sick. muddy also. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm almost glad I didn't went. Uh, yeah. No, actually not. <laughs> yeah, it would have been fun for you to come, but yeah. If we had, if we would have had uh, more sunshine and less rain, that would have been perfect. Yeah, but or maybe snow, snow would be yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Maybe next yeah. year. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So this is my shift. It was really easy. I sewed all the invisible seams by machine because I was also going for speed with this whole project, but I had felt all the seam allowances and I also decided to wear those to the outside both because of having a softer inner layer on your skin, but also for um, yeah visibility, because I thought that these seams look quite nice. It gives it more of a rougher and a bit more accurate uh, look. So that I, worked. Yeah. you see just yeah. how you, you can't do any seams like mm. that with the machine. So mm. yeah, you see it. And it's knee length or longer? It's about knee length. Yes. Okay. This is all I had of this fabric. <laughs> yeah. So perfect use. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So next layer. Next. Do you want to start? Okay. The next layer is really heavy. Do you want to first talk about how we got these fabrics? Maybe. We got these fabrics all at the Christmas. The Christmas market. <laughs> this was not a Christmas market. No, a market. but a market. <laughs> a fabric market. Um, actually, I... It was October, I think. It was the 3rd October, which is a holiday in Germany. Yeah. And every year on the 3rd October, there's a, a fabric market in the Netherlands, close to the border. So all German people who are not working on this day naturally, they're heading over to the Netherlands, to this market. It's quite popular Yeah. in our area. That's true. Yeah. And we do too. We didn't go last no. year? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and we went there. With already the idea in mind that we want to go to this Christmas market, to want to make these outfits. And so we looked for fabrics that would fit these outfits. And for, for me, I bought this wool, this light blue wool um, fabric and the linen. No, this linen I bought in this uh, store. Is that linen? Yeah. It looks really... Delicate and yeah. thin for linen. I was yeah. really happy to find it because I wanted something delicate and fine because this is the garment of a um, high court lady. So someone who had money at the time. <laughs> so I wanted to also um, reflect us that in the fabrics. That's why this is 100% wool and also linen. I didn't go through with it uh, with the sewing threads. I started using um, silk, but uh, I couldn't find one which actually matched the color of the wool. And therefore I used for the seams, you can see, a polyester yarn. You mean for your buttonholes? Yeah, for the buttonholes and the eyelets. Yeah. Uh, the rest is all in silk thread. Just those you In see. Final silk, silk thread, you mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, this is a uh, kirtle or kut, or in um, German, I think it's kittel. Would you call that a kittel? I uh, not me, but um, no. I've only found this translation anywhere. So okay. I also refer to it as a kirtle, even in German, because I don't find a suiting German translation. Mm -hmm. Because kittel is more like an apron. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a, an apron, but it's like it's a, a working garment. Yeah. So, oh. um, yeah, therefore, for, to me, it's a kirtle. Yeah, since this is an upper class garment, it has a lot of buttons, mm -hmm. <laughs> which take a lot of time to make. And um, I think that's the reason why it's an upper class garment, because one button and buttonhole would take uh, up to one and a half hour to make. For you? For me. <laughs> I'm really slow in making buttonholes. And 
even if I'm really slow, I think it would take a lot of time to make them to anyone in comparison to the rest of the garment. And yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I think maybe back then they used special tools just to cut the buttonholes, for example, and maybe they didn't sew the buttonholes this... this um... There are different ways when you're making a buttonhole that you're really covering the whole edge or that you're making it a bit more on the loser side. Yeah. And I've seen quite some examples of buttonholes that were, I wouldn't call them sloppy, but they weren't this stiff, mm -hmm. which would save a lot of time, of course. Absolutely. So maybe, I think even then, that back then they were a bit faster at making this. I, I think, think there so. was one person just making buttonholes, so... Yeah, probably. I, I think Did this you do would this? be done in steps yeah. that one person would make, close the main seams, one make the eyelets, the other one make the buttons, the next one the buttonholes. So it would be faster and there would be multiple person, people working on it, not yeah. just one. <laughs> yeah. So to me, the buttonholes were the thing that took the most time. Mm -hmm. um, the rest was fairly straightforward. I sewed most of the seams with the machine, mm -hmm. only those again that are visible, and the I um, secured the eyelets. Uh, no, the, the seam allowance inside, so that they won't uh, roll up if I wash mm -hmm. it or something. So they that I did also by hand, so you can't mm -hmm. see it. It took me longer than I expected. Mm -hmm. Same. <laughs> I somehow hadn't thought about something like the buttons taking two, three whole days. Um, yeah, but I love wearing it. It's really it's comfy. comfortable. Yeah. yeah, I imagine. Yeah. It's heavy, but comfy. The only thing I don't like is that I unfortunately made it a couple of centimeters too short, which is good when you're walking in mud or something, but I would mm -hmm. have loved having it mm -hmm. a little longer. <laughs> Had you planned on wearing special shoes for this outfit? Uh, no, not for the market itself. I thought about one day making um, leather, historically leather shoes, mm. but not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Because for mine, I planned on wearing more heeled shoes, which are not historically accurate, which are more modern, the ones that I chose which I have here, but yeah. So I wore them and then made the fitting to mm. yeah, match the, the hem of the, the length of the hem. Yeah. yeah, that would have been smart if I did had done this too, but I didn't. Yeah. So I ended up with a little bit too short of a garment. Mm. But for the rest, I'm really happy how it worked. How it yeah. worked. What kind of lacing did you make? Or what? Um, how did you make the lacing? Uh, it's the spiraled one. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean the type of... Ah, it's... Uh, uh, what's it's called. <laughs> loop co looped cord. Loop hand cord, cord. Cord, yeah. So it's basically a th string of... Um, air, air... No, how, how are they called? You want to say Luftmasche? Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> you're the crocheting expert here. Yeah, not me. normally I do know it. <laughs> Um, We're not used to making podcast episodes anymore after a half a year of a break. <laughs> Apparently, yes. I I know the word in my video I made about it, uh, and since then I apparently have forgotten it. Do you want to look it up? Okay, it's 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 made of chain stitches. <laughs> yeah, and I just didn't use a hook just my fingers to make okay. it and I pulled it a little tighter than you mm. would usually with a crocheting mm. and yeah that's basically the cord. Isn't it too elastic because that is what I wanted to try out too but then I found that it was... It's yeah. somewhat elastic mm. but uh, once you have the tension on it it won't bring back so okay, yeah. you can pull it really tight mm. and it stays like that you just have to make a knot on one end and that's it. Mm -hmm. That works quite fine. Well done. That's cool. I want to see it in person. Warm. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe we have to go out in our dresses again. Yeah, we could have a look uh, when the next Christmas... Uh, Christmas. 
<laughs> Meet the real market uh, is yeah. close to us and go there, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's my garment mm -hmm. and show us yours. Yes. So my garment, the fabric for my garment was also purchased as at this Christmas market. Now I'm making the same mistake. That's a fabric Every market. market is a Christmas market now. So this was what I thought would be wool, but which isn't, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Which I learned about when I was ironing the seams. Oh no. And when you smell it, it doesn't smell of wool. It smells of, I think it's polyester. Maybe it's a mix, mix fabric, but it isn't. Mine definitely smells like a sheep. That's nice. <laughs> oh, that's that sad. Would have, that would have been great in the rain. <laughs> like a wet sheep. So I'm not sure you can see much when I'm holding it up like this. It's made of a dark burgundy color, which I love. Mine is also a bit simpler than yours because I decided not to add a lining, but have the raw seams um, visible which was also what a lot of dresses would have been like, I think. Yeah. Because of the fact that this isn't wool, I couldn't press the seams as firmly as firmly or yeah, um, as much with a high temperature than what I would have been able to do with wool, so which is why I sewed down the seams like this, which creates like a beautiful stitch line on the outside as well which makes it look a bit more rustic as well i think i added some binding at the the neckline i also decided uh, to make a neckline that goes up to my neck like this mm. i have seen a lot of like medieval kirtles that have a really wide neckline but i was always struggling with the fact that it would be in winter and we would be cold yeah and i didn't see that many options for winter garments. Yeah, that's true. You could have your neck covered with a white piece of fabric instead, but I didn't really like that because it wouldn't be warm as well. So this is why I decided to have a high neck. I also uh, made a cape which is over it, so you didn't really see that. I didn't add buttons, which is why I have straight sleeves. Um, we haven't talked about the pattern making of our dresses. No, oh, so that's maybe true. I'll talk about that. Um, I used the Medieval Tailor's Assistant, mm -hmm. is the book called. There's a technique call, um, presented in this book where you drape the, f um, the pattern on yourself. So I had a mock-up fabric and I asked my partner to like pin um, the, yeah, the fabric as tightly to my body as possible and in the same way to eliminate all bulk and extra material, which worked but it looked horrible. So going from this stage to another mock-up to then this extra dress took a while and wasn't really straightforward because I was always struggling with bust adjustments. Mm -hmm. So a lot of dresses that I saw on the internet as well that were made by other fellow costumers were made by people that are fairly skinny and fairly flat busted. So you don't have that much fabric to put somewhere. <laughs> but I, yeah, I kind of managed to put up all the fabric, all the extra bulk up to the shoulder, which is why my armholes are quite moved towards my neck. Ah, oh, okay. Because I didn't like the extra fabric that was building up here and around the arm. And yeah. This is why it's also quite tight around the armhole. It's, it's okay. I was imagining it to be worse, but after a day of wearing it at the Christmas market, it was fine, really. Yeah, but that was kind of my struggle when making the dress. Yeah, I had the same way yeah. because I have a wide chest and small waist mm. and getting this without darts mm. to fit was quite difficult. Mm. The only thing I did differently, I made my first draft with a uh, simulation software. So I had the pattern already fitted to my avatar and then um, only had to make smaller mm. changes to the mm. actual mock-up, which helped 
I think what would be more um, helpful is to actually use real wool because wool is quite stretchy and then you could drape the fabric better around your bust. Yeah, that helped yeah. for me definitely because the wool, I can stretch it around the waist mm. a little more and no, the other way around, a little more mm. around the bust. Um, because I think at the bust it's a little smaller than I would need, for example, a cotton mm. dress. And at the waist it is mm. a little wider than it should be. Uh, but through the stretchiness, even with the lining yeah. inside, it still works. Yeah, because that, that's what I wanted to say. The lining doesn't stretch in the same way. Yeah. But it doesn't behave in the same way. So this would be... In this case, I would have thought it to be more counterproductive to have a lining because it doesn't stretch the same way as main fabric but, but luckily but it, it works. works yeah and also the breasts are quite squishy if you need to yeah. squish them you can <laughs> <laughs> yes that's true yeah so yeah it worked in the end it was i think it was for me difficult to do something without darts I'm so yeah. used to do uh, yeah. garments with darts that I struggled mm. in the beginning doing it without them. Yeah, though I've seen some examples of dresses that have not darts, but seams that run from the shoulder, I think, over the bust and then down, which would have been fine too. Yeah, Which would have worked. But I wanted to try this out and it worked. And I'm really happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> I also made a lot of eyelets, which was... Also very time consuming, but um, yeah, I'm kind of proud of how they turned out. Um, yeah, I think that's it about my dress. It's a bit dirty because of all the mud. I wanted to wash it and there was so much dirt and mud and sand coming out of the hem, which is, uh, yeah, it's still dirty. After washing it. Yeah, I washed it yeah. by hand, so I only washed yeah, okay. the because I'm not sure if there is still wool in it, and I wanted to, to make sure that that I won't destroy it. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a shame. Yeah. So and actually, we know if we wear it, we will wear it outside. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not wearing this in the apartment. <laughs> yeah. So then it can be a little bit muddy, yeah. and the next time it would get yeah. muddy again. Yeah. <laughs> and if, you're quite lucky you have a dark color if your hem gets mm -hmm. dirty you, it won't it, be yeah, that visible it's not that visible no. with mine you will see it yeah. <laughs> so it's maybe it's really good that your hem is a little bit more on the shorter side yeah probably mm. and actually my kirtle is planned as an undergarment so I would have another mm. garment over it a gown mm. and so um it's probably better that this is a little bit shorter. Otherwise, I would, uh, yeah, probably not fall over it. But mm -hmm. maybe <laughs> it, would, can, it would be yeah. annoying. So yeah. yeah, I was also when walking through these muddy like paths that were created in this. It's actually in uh, Dortmund, which is about like two or three hours away from here, mm. and it's a real uh, like a really big parking park. It's a park with a lot of paths, but these aren't, um, yeah, it was muddy. So I was holding up my skirt like this almost all the time. Yeah, it didn't help, but. <laughs> Where are your fellow costumed people? Um, yeah, my friend that was uh, celebrating her birthday on this day, she went in a cape mm -hmm. and a medieval inspired dress, but the others were modern clothes. There were quite a lot of people uh, like wearing historical medieval garments or medieval inspired garments or like these Game of Thrones style capes, fur capes and all of that. Okay. There were quite a lot of people. Yeah. I think it attracts to a lot of uh, goth, to the goth scene as well. Yeah. And I really like that. It was also called a fantasy yeah, it's, market, it's not a, just a yeah. medieval. Yeah. I th think the scene was dragons, pirates, and yeah. fairies, or something like that. Yeah, there were quite some installations with a lot of light, which looked be really beautiful in in the dark when it got dark. Ah, yeah. Next year. Next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, do you have something else to show? 
you show I, us? <laughs> I made one further accessory uh, until I got sick because the kettle does not have any pockets. Mm -hmm. And um, since we thought we want to go there in style, in costume and net not wearing a modern uh, backpack, I decided to make a bag. It's a drawstring bag. Cute. So you can, oops, pull it close, like so. <laughs> <laughs> I messed up the closure a little bit. I know right. I should have. Um, usually you have two strings or four strings going round, and then you mm -hmm. can pull on both sides and close mm -hmm. it. And I messed this up, and now I have to make the knot mm -hmm. to in order to um, close it, like mm -hmm. so. And otherwise, it would just stay like this without okay. a knot. And yeah, that this cord would be um, attached to a belt, mm -hmm. and then it hangs approximately at knee height which would be apparently historically accurate. <laughs> Did you make a belt? Uh, not yet. I have bought everything to do so, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I got sick and ran out of time. <laughs> Since then, I didn't start again. Mm -hmm. I plan to finish the whole outfit, um, I hope, till March. That was is my personal deadline just to finish this project to know I've created it, I can wear it and um, yeah. Yeah, but back to the bag. It's uh, a linen cotton mix mm -hmm. of fabric. Um, the yellow is the same color which the lining of my gown will have and the blue the gown's main fabric. So it would match okay. the gown which goes over the kirtle and so I can wear it with both. But it even also works with the kirtle alone. I saw mm -hmm. some um, paintings where um, people with bluish garments would wear um, yellow pockets mm -hmm. because in the beginning I was like, but the pocket is quite visible. I yeah. thought I wouldn't quite eye catching. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have something that eye catchy where my money is. <laughs> But yeah. I was wrong. Apparently, back in the times, you would also wear quite eye-catchy yeah. um, accessories and bags. And this is definitely mm. one you would see. <laughs> I mean, it's also a way of showing off how much money you have. Yeah, and definitely. also, if the bags are this beautifully crafted with a lot of pearls and extra trims, yeah, then yeah, you're showing that you can afford to buy Expensive clothes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And this one, I completely underestimated how much time it would take. Yeah. I braided each um, of those braids mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in the right length. I sewed them on by hand and I mm -hmm. sewed on the pearls by hand. Um, it's lined so that you don't see all the mm -hmm. threads on the inside and don't accidentally tear them open or something. Mm -hmm. And also the tassels, the braids at the sides are, yeah, basically everything is hand handmade in this mm -hmm. bag. And yeah, I just underestimated how much time this small project would take. Yeah. The bigger the project, they're most, almost always quite fast. If you compare big skirts to tailored bodices as well. Yeah. It's also, it's almost always these kind of yeah more things that take more time yeah i mean i could just have sewn two pieces of fabric together and add a string and it would be a mm. bag too but i wanted something special i wanted to make this um yeah an upper class garment because i have this uh I didn't told you in the beginning my whole inspiration is based on a playing card which was painted in 1430s mm -hmm. and it's the whole set depicts um, upper class people, noble women and noble men in a hunting setting or mm -hmm. yeah, basically the stack high court lady 
which uh, I found really beautiful, is depicted with a deer or stag. And I just found this garment so beautiful and I wanted to recreate that and therefore have the whole vibe going mm. with it. And that's why this is so labor intensive. Um, I wanted to try something new that too. <laughs> I, uh, I also had the idea for making a headpiece because in this painting she's wearing a headpiece with two horns. Mm. And oh, yeah. mm. they were typically adorned something like that and mm. I would like to have a um, reoccurring uh, component in the whole mm. outfit so yeah Continuity. having this yeah having this in the back and in the horns mm. so that you have two pieces that bring it all together yeah. yeah but this was the last thing I was able to do I also sewed two parts or uh, garments for my um, partner but then I stopped. You were both sick. And which is a shame. The day the market was, I was so sad. <laughs> I stayed the whole day in bed. <laughs> oh. But uh, and I almost felt like I wouldn't touch this um, garment ever again. Oh no! But right now I'm mm. really um, inspired to restart it, make the next mm. layer, and really one day be able to mm. wear it complete. Yes, you will. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> but anyways, what have you? I, as I told you before, I made a cape as well, which is another stash busting project of mine, which is this. This is fake fur, so don't come at me. <laughs> These were, this was originally bought, I think, like 10 years ago. <laughs> And uh, it would have been like a collar, something that I could have sewn into a collar for um, a coat, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. I had just two small strips of this type of um, fake fur. And I just, uh, yeah, it was a really free-handed kind of experimental project because I had just this amount of um, yeah fabric. So I cut a piece for the back and for the front and some gussets here at the shoulder. Mm -hmm. I draped it on my dress form. Um, yeah, don't look at the seams too closely, please. <laughs> <laughs> but you would wear it like this. And then I had uh, a safety pin that I would use to close it in the middle. It was really a last minute. Really, I was working on this project the day itself, like the morning itself. I was still... Uh, sewing together some pieces so this is why it's a bit yeah it's uh, another kind of project we normally take a lot of time and we want to do things perfectly and now in this case I just had to do it the way with the amount of time given to me so but it's I... good to have uh, to learn how to do things quickly <laughs> yeah. too true yeah. but I think it looks great yeah. for, especially I just saw pictures how yeah. you wore it, but I think it looked great. So Thank you. <laughs> it yeah, was it worth kept, it. It kept me warm. This is what I wanted to have. I was really worried. I don't like not wearing a shawl in winter when I'm going yeah. outside. And like a shawl wouldn't have been accurate for the garments. So <laughs> this was really essential and it was really cold that day. So it was good to have this kind of cape. Yeah. Ooh. It's quite, it's quite soft. I mean, you you get the feeling of fake artificial fur. Yeah, but it's fine. It wasn't fine. It wasn't fun cutting it out because my fabric was was covered with fake hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it worked out. Worked out fine. Yeah. What I also did was uh, a hair piece, which was also very experimental. I think I can show you. Yeah. So. As you might see, I have short hair, which <laughs> isn't great for medieval um, hairstyles. So what I decided to do in the end, which was also very last minute, I bought hair extensions, but I didn't manage to weave those in into my own hair. So I decided to make two strings, like two braids. And what I then did is attach this, these both to 
like a um, woven band or trim mm -hmm. and then I put the like this and uh, yeah created this typical type of medieval um, yeah hairstyle yeah braided with these loops. braided loops at the side yeah. of your face and then I covered my real hair I put my real hair to the back and then I covered my uh, head with a beautiful like a white very soft uh, yeah white fabric to cover all the other things <laughs> under it yes which also worked out fine but it was quite stressful the day itself to manage uh, how to do that and I'm not really good at making my hair or at making historical hairstyles I mean because I don't do that very often yeah that's a problem that's the problem often you get used to it but yeah only once a year <laughs> yeah it's uh, too so, uh, rare to get used to it and also with my real hair I can't really do anything because it's too short and if I let it um, I have really thin hair as well so even if it would be longer then I can't really do a lot of with it so yeah, yeah. I also thought a lot about doing my hair mm. because well as you can see I have a side cut mm. and if I want to make two um, braids mm. Um, usually in medieval um, hairstyles you would have a center part but mm -hmm. I would have to put it to the side in order to have enough hair on this side mm -hmm. and I never got around to trying it mm -hmm. um, that's also the why I thought about making horns because then the hair mm -hmm. is, is um, covered mm -hmm. or yeah. the hair is in the horn basically <laughs> which looks quite funny if yeah, you see it yeah. sketched <laughs> um, but that was my plan to um, yeah deal with my hair and it's an yeah. easy way to cover it because at med yeah. medieval times you could cover basically or you can cover your modern hairstyles quite easily and mm. use extensions mm. yeah but you if you have long hair it's one of the uh, rare hairstyles where long hair is quite um, easy to deal with <laughs> yeah so, so that was all. So you have a future plan in the way that you want to um, create the outer layer of your dress? Yes, I want to, yeah. to make uh, the outer gown, yep. the entire headpiece, mm -hmm. because there's a whale, a gimp, a head roll, I guess, mm -hmm. and the horns. And did I forget something? Maybe making stockings and I ditched the idea of making shoes. <laughs> I would love to, but I don't think I would do. I should do. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot the um, belt. belt. <laughs> this one I will do too. And also the garments for my partner. But mm -hmm. yeah, it will take a couple of weeks, months probably to finish that and if you're wondering I didn't plan to m make the entire gown or outfit to the Christmas market I planned just to wear this mm. with a relatively simple um, whale and gimp mm. so a simpler version of the entire outfit mm. because I knew I wouldn't make it yeah but for the entire vision I want to finish it one mm. day do you have two plans to go on with it or add something? Um, so for me this dress is complete, so this outfit is complete, but I thought about making a summer version maybe. Because mm -hmm. like a lot of other medieval markets here in our region are in summer and I was thinking about making a linen version. Mm. But that's a future project. <laughs> Let's see when I'm, I have the time and motivation to do it because now I have a medieval dress and you can't wear one at the same time so that's true yeah. maybe yeah. we should have we should go to more Christmas <laughs> <laughs> medieval markets yeah. Um, yeah maybe you can let us know where to go any ideas would be great the western part of Germany please. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and maybe one day you will see the finished entirely finished garments yeah, but that's it for a medieval episode, yeah, I guess. It was quite another 
dive into yeah another topic which I hadn't touched on before. We are more into like Victorian Edwardian projects at the moment. So it was really fun trying out something new. Mm -hmm. Also something where you don't have as much resources as with uh, yeah, Edwardian garments. And also so having a deadline. Yeah. <laughs> Which made this was made idea it for easier, me. <laughs> but it forced us a little bit to work uh, mm. on a tighter schedule. And mm. we talked about it in some episode before that we thought about having deadlines might help, and we mm. learned it might not help. <laughs> but in my case, it it I mean it did help to get the garment done, but I'm not going to do that again soon because. I'm working on my master's degree and I was neglecting said degree because I was yeah, putting my priorities on the stress and that might not be the best way. <laughs> and it was also quite stressful at the end. But now we have addresses, so it's mm -hmm. fine. Um, yeah, we have some more uh, podcast episodes planned for the future. So stay tuned for more topics about knitting, Edwardian garments, lace making, maybe some weaving as, as well one day. So stay tuned for that. You can also have a look at, at our older podcast episodes. We have a lot about set topics as well. Yeah, we will try to be as regular with our episodes as possible, but let's see how much time we have. <laughs> as you always can see, yeah. we take a lot of time to make the things we show you. Yeah. So I think it's time to say goodbye now. See you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye.